All right, how do I? Are we, are we off? Are we off? Yeah, how do I? In, how do I intro this thing? Talk to the camera. <sighs> Amateurs. Go on then, you do it. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Free Humanity Podcast. I'm here with Callum and Simon. Mm. It's ten o'clock at night, but on a Sunday. On yeah. a Sunday, but we're here to bring a brand new podcast to you all to let you know what's going on behind the scenes. Let you know who we're helping, how we're helping them, and how we plan to free humanity. Now, I know the name sounds a little bit extreme, but we'll get into that. Well, the other thing, if we're using either of those two intros, <laughs> which are both average, you need to warm up, I guess, takes time. Yeah, yeah. Um, we can do one if you want. Should I do one? Why don't you do it? And then we can ask people. And then we'll actually just go straight into it. We can test it out, put them out which one's the best intro and see which one people like the most. Just do it. All right. Welcome to the Free Humanity Podcast. But we're going to show you how we're building a company that does good and builds a platform to help you do what you love, while at the same time interviewing some of the people that we're helping and help a lot of people do a lot of help, help, help. <laughs> Wait, no. Guess what? Help. By the way, this is a classic beginning of a first episode of a podcast. One day we're going to look back at this and say, remember how shit we were? Yep. Look how good we got. Yep. Everyone's been here who's ever started a podcast. Like, how do you get it right? It's kind of cool, just showing this shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Welcome to Free Humanity Podcast, everyone. <laughs> hey, in front of you. Yeah, do it. Yeah. You can't come on with it. Let's just get into the podcast. Let's, let's start by asking an important question, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, like, what the f*** are we doing here? Doing our bit to help people live a life that they love so that they can experience everything life has to offer and break free from the traps that the system puts on them. Ellen, why are we here? I think we are giving people the freedom freedom that they deserve to live a life outside of a structure. They can design their own lives. And I think that we are helping more people become entrepreneurs and do cool shit that they care about. Um, and in doing that, I think we are saving the world because I think entrepreneurs will save the world. And we sat here at 10 p.m. because we had nothing better to do and we're sad. I got a little bored of woman yeah. put into bed, but I um, decided to do this instead, and he wasn't very happy about it. But uh, that aside, you, um, I think you're both right, but I would add something. I think we're here to help people help people. So it's, it is less about what we're doing and more about enabling the community to do something about it. If you've got this problem, enabling you to do something about it. If you want to help people with this problem, enabling you to do something about it. I think that's... That's why I would like to go with this and help people listening make a difference. Yeah, for sure. And I think people see a lot of our polished content and they see the highlights of all the people that we're helping and, and all the exciting stuff. But I think it's really important and hopefully interesting for everyone to see the kind of behind the scenes of what goes on, the process of how we're building this quite like unconventional company where we're helping people for free, but with a for-profit model. And the ups and downs of it all as well, right? It's not all sunshine and well, rainbows. Well, why don't we thing. start there? Why don't we talk about some downs? And what yeah. you know, yeah. what's not been good? Let's say this week, I've got quite a few things that pop into my mind that we don't really tell anybody because maybe we're embarrassed about it. Maybe it's not the image we want, or it's just you know hard to share. What if you got a story? Maybe you guys could share. Yeah, I guess the main one is. It well, it can be kind of hard building a platform that um, helps people for free and still make enough money to fund it doing so. I think we're, we're a great example that it is possible and we're really trying to pave that way. Um, but I think it doesn't come without its difficulties when we are helping millions and millions of people, giving out a lot of, of cash in the videos, um, building expensive infrastructure to help them um but but not charging them so it's it's the best thing about what we do because it's what makes it unique it what makes us so authentic and people can really see that and feel that um but it can become a struggle when we want to scale of course and and help people in a bigger way and um a lot of the time it it can be hard to find the funds to do so so at the minute on help bank we're trying to uh build it into a sustainable business um we we've made we've made the media a sustainable business already through brands and sponsors and things like that and that's very exciting but help bank as a platform is only a few months old but building a software platform as people will know that have tried is quite expensive so 
we're kind of at this crossroads at the minute of breaking into um, the next stage of Help Bank, proving we've, we've proved that it works. We've got 105,000 users on there, um, but we do need to find some revenue for it so we can keep building it. And I know that we will do it, but like any business, like uh, Nike, like, we, like any business I can think of that I've seen an interview with recently, they have times where they, they don't know how they're going to meet the payroll. And yeah. you think we, although you see us giving a lot of money out, we still have those moments. Um, and I guess we're, we're working through that to, to make it sustainable so we can keep building it. What about you, Cullen? Had a moment that's a down moment, I guess, in this post. Yeah. Well, well this week I've actually had quite a good week. Um, I'm feeling more fired up. Um, yeah, because you normally moan quite a lot, don't you? You have to be quite positive. Pretty good, right? I've been pretty good. Yeah. But um, I'm actually kind of struggling to balance my personal life amongst amongst it. I, I I'm so in love with my work, and I think I've finally hit that like obsession, uh, like place. Um, I'm just so all in on this, but at the same time, it's like yesterday. We've been recording all weekend, right? Yeah, we've been so busy, like, like half five on yesterday morning, all the way through till Sunday. It's now twenty five past ten, and we haven't stopped. We've been here on the house the whole time recording it. Um, but I was supposed to go to a family dinner last night, and I actually planned the day. I I, I knew I had this family dinner, and I had it in my calendar at seven p.m. I was like, okay, I've got to be there in Petworth for seven p.m. Saturday night so I can be with my family um, and I structured the whole day around it made sure I could finish by half five to make sure I had enough time to get yeah, that you mentioned it many times in the chat like yeah. I've got a hard stop I've got to go somehow I don't know how I did it but I got the timing wrong 4pm not 7pm I did my calendar wrong I'd done all that planning and focused so much on it um, but anyway well, we've been long story short yeah they're very upset Yeah, I can tell they're very upset mm. um you did really mention it. Where you just said, "Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm not going." You didn't really mention that it caused any issue. But... No. Well, look, it, I said to Jack earlier, like, it's either I do two things shittily, be with my family shittily, and work shittily, or I just get the work done, save for the drive to Petworth, and I, I really upset my family. But I think they were going to be upset anyway. Mm. But I'm kind of struggling with that because, I, yeah, I'm obsessed with my work right now, and I love it. Personally, I'm very happy, but. Some of the people around me, I think sometimes it's difficult to balance everything. Yeah. Well, I think I have a, a mixture of what you're talking about because, like, I really love spending time with my son. This weekend, I've been recording all weekend. He permanently says to me, and you guys have been hearing it, like, you don't spend enough time with me, Daddy. What are you doing? You know, I want to spend time with you. I want to spend time with you. I want to spend time with him. I love him. He's so much fun. But it's, um, it, you, I just, you just feel guilty. Um. But that wasn't actually the original thought I had when talking about like what, what's been hard this week. I wasn't actually thinking about that until you talk about your family. It makes me realise I have the same problem. But um, And you can't really get that time back with your kid. You know, like he's not mm. going to be six for, forever. And once he turns seven, he'll never be six again. You know, like, so it's kind of that I don't ever want to lose a moment with him. And when he says, please spend more time with me, it really pulls at my heart, you know. But anyway, um, I think actually for me this week, it's generally just been exciting and good. And I think just there's so many people that want help and I feel like I'm always letting someone down. Sometimes it's my son, sometimes it's my wife, sometimes it's you guys, sometimes it's the people that are asking for help. And I I just I sometimes find it quite hard to know. I mean, if I don't help someone, I mean, sometimes people's messages, as you guys know, some of the DMs that you guys listening probably don't know, they're literally life and death. People are like, I, you know, I'm on the street, I've got two kids... We're not going to have anywhere to stay tonight. I've got no food. You know, my car's broken down. I'm losing my job tomorrow. I can't. I can't make ends meet. The lights just gone off, and the power in my house. This is this is often, often what you know. I'm getting messages. Wise, um, I think we have a mouse up there. Can you? Hear? <laughs> Definitely something alive. Yeah, we have our first listener. <laughs> so we have a mouse in the studio. I can hear. Um, but yeah, that. At the end of the day, I think that, that that is the hardest thing for me. And I think that's why I actually need to work even harder at this moment, even though I'm tired and we've been pushing it for a couple of years now, really, haven't we? I think I feel like now, actually, more than ever, I've got to work hard because the infrastructure is almost there to service all of those people. Each thing that people need is almost in place to help them. And it can't always be me. I know that. But it has been in the early years. But now we have Help Bank the platform that can help people. We have the doorbell 
which people can press and get help. We have a system of content that's useful that people can go and watch. We have the webinars each week with experts. So slowly but surely, the infrastructure is nearly all in place. That Every time someone DMs me, every time someone messages me, there's actually a way to help. Them. And But I also somehow feel a bit, maybe it's like the last mile in a marathon, that kind of tired feeling, but you know hope's coming. But just sometimes in the meantime, there are a lot of people that fall through the cracks that we cannot help in the way that they want help. Um, and and sometimes you feel you feel like you're letting down the very people you're trying to serve. Yeah. How do you define help? Well, I I think that's a really good question because I think a lot of the time people say they want help. I mean, one of my biggest frustrations is people say in the comments, "Please help," and then you have to reply with, "Sure, how can I help?" And then people don't even reply after that, or they they don't say exactly what they want. They say, "I just want to talk to you." Okay. Well, what can I help you if I talk to you? What's the question? You know, and I, I find that question of like, what is help that people need? I think a lot of people don't actually know. And and I think that's the biggest thing that I still struggle with as well. Like how to help people figure out what help they actually need. Because people always say, oh, I, I need you to invest in my business. Okay, well, how much? I don't know. Um, what will you do with the money if you got it? Oh, I, I, I get more sales i'm like well why can't you get more sales anyway you know what is it you could do with social media these days you know you can get organic reach and there's just so many different ways to get out there and get business you know but people sometimes want a little bit of it all handed to them or they want you to like solve all of their problems and no one can do that so help what is help is a really good question I, we have that as a bit of an internal thing like what is help right how to define helping someone what is we've done our good job what do you think can always help? Well, it could be a number of things. I think just going off of what you were saying, I think a lot of the time some people just want, we've said this before, but people just want to be listened to or just someone to talk to. They need that that support. It doesn't even have to be like actual solutions or or or, or maybe there might not even be someone to, uh, like it doesn't have to be an entrepreneur listening. It could just be like just someone to actually just get behind them. I don't know. I don't know if it's just listening though because... I think a lot of the time, I mean, we've tried this, right? Someone will say they want to talk to me and we'll say, well, why don't you talk to Adam Smith, for example? And people, oh, I want to talk to Simon. And I'm not trying to make myself out to a martyr, but I think people think that there are certain people that can solve all their problems. And if it was just listening, it'd be a really interesting problem to try and solve. Surely there's a way to have people listen to. A doorbell is a way of listening to people. You can go there, you press the button, you pitch your dream, and then we upload it and, and share it with the world. Like That's a way of talking, right? I, I don't know if it's n- just people need someone to talk to. I think they need someone that they think can solve all their problems to talk to. Yeah. But th- that doesn't exist though, right? Well, I think people think they are. Like m- mentors, which is everyone's throwing around these days, oh, I need a mentor. They think they're going to solve all their problems. Or someone wealthy is going to solve all their problems. You know, if I just spoke to the right person, like Elon Musk, he'd give me all the money I need, and that's it, right? Somehow that's going to... I don't know if people are looking for the easy fix... To, to me, I think help is, help is giving people the access to help. And it's quite important to me because we're we're only a small team. You're only one person. And we can't tangibly meet and help every single person individually in their own unique way to have success. And everyone is unique. So success does look different for everyone. But that's why, although we do our best to help a lot of people, we help individuals a lot in the videos to inspire others. Um help to me is providing access to help in the way that they need so i think a big part of that is fine is helping people understand what help they need and that's definitely something that we can and and do try and keep improving on um but then it's also once that we help people establish the help that they need give them the different options is it marketing then okay go and pitch to the doorbell um and it's really cool that we've created a free system where someone can literally go and tell their dream in Twickenham or New York or Hong Kong and it, then it could be seen by tens of thousands hundreds of thousands of people that's pretty cool so if it's marketing we can tick that off if it's funding um, a lot of the time obviously we've, we've connected people up on a site like GoFundMe or p- people that see the video um, will then offer to invest things like that um, can we help everyone in every way no not currently but I think through building Help Bank building the community um 
Yeah, the community is one of the things I'm most excited about. Yeah. Like, I see yeah. it in the comments where people jump in and help. And that really, you know, that's really amazing. I think that yeah. the 4 million people we have online now and the different community chats we have on Discord, people do really jump in and help. And that's that's quite exciting, actually, in that bit. Yeah. Access access to the help. That's how I like to define what we're doing. And even helping people help themselves, you know, like... Yeah. It, I think that's the biggest thing. It's empowering people. I think... Well, what I like, and this sounds a bit arrogant, but what I like about our content is is actually inspiring people from the feedback that we get, and I feel it too, to kind of like, and maybe this is something for the, for the listeners to pick up on. A lot of the time when we're featuring someone in the video, of course we're featuring that person in the video, we want them to get the success they need or the help they need. But actually, one of the biggest benefits has been the DMs from people that say, I watched that video I realised I'm making excuses for not doing what I'm meant to be doing. I've got off my ass. I've got myself into shape. I'm. I've started my business. You know, and that that's actually that wasn't that was a byproduct I wasn't expecting actually from the content. Yeah, it's just been really exciting. So if a video is getting 28 million views, there's probably 10,000 people in that video that have actually gone and done something yeah. because they felt inspired by the video they just watched. 100%. And that that is exciting as well. I mean, it's a different type of community action. But it's um it's interesting. One of the things we're going to do on this podcast in future episodes because this is the first crappy episode everyone's first episode is crappy right but the um, future episodes we're going to be having guests on that have been helped that can talk about that process and what help meant for them but also those that help people as part of our community so yep. we'll have you on you, you the listeners on and you'll be able to share how you help and what help is for you and what help you need so I'm quite excited about we've got some exciting guests lined up yeah so, yeah I, w- I want to keep it I want to have this as a place for us to share the behind the scenes, the, the journey of building a billion dollar company like like you used to do or back when you when you started out on YouTube. I, w- I want to tell the deeper stories of people we help and um, deeper stories of people that have done it. So, mm-hmm. Well, we're going to tell a story now, aren't we? Because we do actually have someone to help live on the podcast right now. Who's going to explain this? Well, you just told me about it, but I have seen it. So for 100 days, someone... DM'd me every day for the last 100 days saying hello. Every single day. And I have kind of seen it and kind of ignored it because <laughs> hello hello doesn't mean anything, first of all. And there's so many people that are actually defining exactly what they need in the DMs. We try to apply to them. And we now have a full-time team pretty much trying to apply to the DMs. I personally have not been able to keep up with them. But are we going to call this person now? Go for it. All right. Let's do it. I am quite excited for this because I do respect the hustle. It might not necessarily be the best way go to, to go about it because, as you say, like, what does hello actually mean? But, like, it's actually quite... I've forgotten their name. What was, the, what was their name? I don't know. It's a strange name. <laughs> Let me but the persistence piece. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it's... I agree. I mean, and, anyone, I, anyone DMs us from the, hearing this podcast for 100 days, I think they deserve... It's a bit like in England, if you live to 100, the king writes you a letter to say, well done, yeah. right? Yeah. So it feels a little bit like that, doesn't it? Maybe this can be a thing that we do. Yeah. Um, if people DM us every day for 100 days, we have to call you. Everyone's going to do that. Well, that that if everyone does that, then that that deserves a reaction, doesn't yeah. it? I mean, I, I scrolled through the messages and the level of rejection that, that this guy's been getting for the last 100 days is kind of crazy. Mm. It's quite impressive that he he hasn't actually given it up. So he I think the least we mobile can do number is, in there as well is get in touch, right? All right, that's cool. Ready? Here we go. It is ten thirty nine p.m. now. Ben said he just Sunday. commented on the post. Is he? No, he might not pick up because he thinks it's a weird number. And therein is some sort of irony, is it? We call him for 100 days until he picks up. <laughs> See, DMs for 100 days, and then we call for 100 days. Come on, make the podcast great and answer the phone. Do us a favour. What if you called him from Instagram? I'm calling him from WhatsApp. I could call from Instagram, should I? I mean, it'll be your profile, right? I mean, I do it from Instagram, yeah. As soon as I've opened it up, there's like 100 DMs. So, Well, that's really nice. Someone we just uh, posted up their story... Uh, who was working in a coffee shop when we were in New York. Mm-hmm. And if you remember, he uh, I asked him what, he, what his dream is, said to be a photographer. Yeah. And then I hired him to be my photographer in New York City. And then he took pictures of me and we recorded the whole thing. We just put his clip up. He's put, 
It's literally just come in while we're on the podcast. It's put, you're so iconic, I greatly appreciate it. <laughs> iconic is a great word, isn't it? I like the idea of being iconic. That's a new one for you, it's isn't it? Iconic. <laughs> this is the thing when you help people. I think when I saw him in the coffee shop, I think people always think it's some sort of scam when you give them some money and you're a stranger and they're like, what is going on here? And then you, you know, you tell them what you're doing, you take some video of them helping take pictures of you and then they don't hear from you for two weeks because it's been probably a bit longer than that before we edited the clip and put it up. And then it goes up. I think people are like, oh, what's happened? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like it's a, it's an interesting thing. And then I've watched that clip of this particular photographer so many times. I feel like I know him. Yep. You know, with his smile and his idiosyncrasies. You, I really feel a connection to this person who I literally met in a coffee shop. <laughs> That's just one of the things I really love about doing this, actually. I really feel like I've met hundreds of new friends almost. And people that you walk past, like people emptying the bin that I probably would have ignored. You go up to them and ask them their dream and they've got this incredible story. Yeah. You just you probably wouldn't walk past them like, oh, bin job, you know. Yeah. Like, and you and you can you listen to their story and you're like, My God, you're so smart and you so much going on and for whatever reason this is the job you're doing now, but and you you know, your conception or misconception of people it's so different when you actually talk to people. Who's been the most surprising, do you think? I think one of the things I was, lady was sticks out in my mind is um, that two-time cancer survivor in New York City. Because mm-hmm. she looked mental coming towards me. She was, you know, purple hair and just looked crazy. And then, you know, and you could easily just judge her as like, oh, she's slightly crazy. Mm-hmm. And then you talk to her, it's, it's not crazy. She's alive. She's got a story. She's alive. She's, like, survived cancer twice. Yeah. So she's living life to the full, and that means purple hair. You know what I mean? Like, she's the opposite to crazy. I think she's totally awake. She's actually free. Probably a good... I find that a lot of people aren't as this scene. One that sticks out to me is the guy, the biker-looking guy in Brighton, who looked yeah. like a biker, yeah. big, yeah. 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 jacket, um, but you gave him some money to to, to give to someone else. It was quite he emotional, wasn't he? Yeah, he did it. He came back and then he was emotional. Was like, that, that's such an amazing thing you've done. And, and, yeah, like, a lot of people wouldn't go up to someone or talk to someone off that preconceived idea of what it might be like. But. Yeah, he was quite scary. I remember, like, <laughs> just it's, it's got kind of that, if you look at him, see a tattoos on his face, and it's just that yeah. kind of scary look for me. It's like, uh, tattoos on, on your face to me are just crazy. But, you know, talking to him, he was just like the gentlest person who had the kindest heart and just was looking for a reason to be kind to people. And it was like, he was running around giving money out to people after that. And like, it was like, this is my purpose. I've got to help people. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know, it was just kind of, special to to amazing. also break through that 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 con- this misconception thing you build up in your own mind i saw a guy with tattoos on his face and my instant thought was or maybe he's going to beat me up or if i ask him what his dream is he might get annoyed that i bothered him while he's having a coffee and punch me in the face i don't could be more opposite the nicest person you could ever meet yeah it's kind of surprising when you actually engage people in a positive way just how nice people are Hey there, this is uh, Simon Squibb calling. I am so surprised and so sorry you called me. I'm sorry I was in bed because you just give me a moment to get changed and get out of the house. You don't, okay. you don't need to change. I haven't got any video on, so it's okay. I can just talk to you uh, now if you want, or I'm happy, to, of course, to wait a few minutes. Yeah, sorry, it's just where I'm at at the moment. I would rather get out of the house. Is that okay? Of course. All right, no problem. Um just of course, no problem. See you. So instantly, you know, there's an interesting story here, isn't there? Get up and go outside to take a phone call. It's quite funny in concept. He tried to contact you every day for 100 days and you call him. He's like, give me a minute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm busy, man. <laughs> this guy won't leave me alone. <laughs> so this is the thing, isn't it? Like, the, the way the world is structured. Like, let's face it. Calling someone at 10 to to 11 p.m. on a Sunday night is pretty weird. But DMing someone every day for 101 days, actually 101 days today, you just said on his message, is uh, also mental, isn't it? So every single day you've woken up and sent a DM to someone who actually calls you. But even when they call you, you're like, that's pretty weird. What's he doing calling me at, <laughs> at, at, at this time of night on a Sunday? We might have to edit this bit out. <laughs> but while we're waiting for him to call back, we should say something interesting. It, we this was radio for this. If it was radio, then it, you'd have to keep talking about something. Like, um, 
Um, what? Well, let's talk quickly then before he rings it back. What well, if he does ring it back? Uh, about the week ahead. What's happening in the week ahead? Yeah, so it's a really exciting time. I guess we continuing on from the negative, but I said we've, I'm very focused on helping find some revenue for Help Bank this week, having exciting conversations. But then um, towards the end of the week, I'm actually flying out to Hong Kong, um, as you'll be out there, Simon, and we're launching Help Bank in Hong Kong with an exciting event out there. And we went last year and it was my favourite city in the world. So it's a bit of a blessing to be able to travel and work and justify it. Um, yeah, uh, I think one of you guys said something earlier. Oh, Callum said how oh, you said to him, "You've got to change your mindset. Like going away isn't doesn't necessarily mean you're going on holiday. It's not holiday. You just you're just going somewhere." And we work from everywhere, so yeah, it's great, but it's not holiday. Well, we're kind of trying to get the whole team to work remotely yeah. in the next two or three weeks because we've actually recorded a lot of content, so we don't need to be in the street recording content for the next three or four weeks. Yep. So it's a chance for the whole team to have a new location to work from yeah it's exciting and I really love working that way like I'm going to Hong Kong now I will be working but I will be looking out at skyscrapers and having a whole different food choice option system you know like just that change is as good as a rest right and you actually don't need a rest so uh, and then I'm I'm going to New Zealand after Hong Kong and uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to drop what, what email I just got today but I don't want to want to tell people some stuff that's going on but without getting us into trouble but I'm hoping we'll get I can say this I think I'm hoping we'll work with the All Blacks in New Zealand and I'm hoping in Hong Kong that we'll get a doorbell up and running there next week so people in in Asia can go pitch their dream um, in both New Zealand and in Hong Kong Um, and then when I come back we'll be off to film a TV show in America I hope if all goes well I think I can say I hope every time and then it's (laughs) A guaranteed or a promise, but that that's 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 the plan. That that TV show's happening one way or another. We'll do it one way or another. That's actually, it's funny because someone said to me the other day, "Oh, you're doing the TV show on Netflix," and I said yes. <laughs> it didn't feel like a lie, but it kind of is. I had to say afterwards, it's not signed yet, you know. But I I I feel like I can say yes because it it has to happen. There needs to be a new educational business show on TV because I mean, in generally like Shark Tank. And Dragon's Den are fine, but they're not real. They don't actually teach people really how business works. Because as an investor myself, I guess you could call me a shark. I would never speak the way that they do to investors. I'm lucky if they let me invest in businesses. I'm not taking 50% because that's just dumb. I'm taking a very small percentage so that founder stays empowered to run their business. And things like that just bother me when TV shows don't represent truly how the entrepreneur world works. Because it means that people watch those shows and they then learn the wrong thing and not how business really works. So, yeah, there needs to be a new TV show. There needs to be a new, true business show that educates people about how business really is. That's fun, that's enjoyable, but ultimately is real. I think that's what we're bringing to the table with what we're doing. For sure. We've already proven it, right? With the with the content that we put out. It's yep. just, just need to manifest it and turn it into a uh, lone TV show. Which is weird, because, you know, we've been looking at the numbers, and this is interesting for the listeners, like, in reality, our present content gets more views than most shows on Netflix. So I guess it's just expanding the reach. And a very popular show on Netflix would probably get more views than us. But, I mean, we were looking at the numbers for Shark Tank and Dragon's Den versus the views we get on our present content. We get more views than those shows. More people are watching our product and our educational content than they are watching Shark Tank and Dragon's Den, which is insane to me. But there is something prestigious about being on TV. There yeah, is something. So. It's a different audience. It's like if the PR, we've had a lot of PR recently. Yeah, and of course, when you get on the BBC News and people watch your content, it's a different demographic to those that are watching on TikTok. And of course, the, by the way, just a caveat, the numbers I'm talking about on Dragon's Den and Shark Tank is just on the TV side. So the TV broadcasting numbers, we get more views. I'm sure if I added up their own personal social media exposure, I mean, on YouTube, Dragon's Den does quite well. So, you know, it's it's probably if I added it all up, including their social media content, we're not as popular. But we're not we're not the BBC. We're not ABC. So we're doing pretty good. It's one of the biggest things I've learned from you is 
you have to have the most like unwavering confidence about your mission, about what it is you're doing. And then no matter how hard it is or far away it might seem, you find a way of making it happen. And even if you don't make the actual exact thing happen, you get like a hell of the way there. Yeah, I, I think that's true. Like I remember when we all started working together a couple of years ago, I tried to explain a little bit about Entrepreneur House and about the different ideas that we had to make a TV show. And I think it is it, it sounds a bit far-fetched because when we met, really, I was just doing a podcast, right? And I think it does take time for these things to build up. I mean, Entrepreneur House has been in my head for, you know, three years. And now I find myself still mentioning it in the TV shows we're making and the clips we're making. And slowly that brand is building up into a concept. And here we are today in a studio in my opinion this whole house is is a is a, a place to help make dreams happen is a place to make content i mean in theory three of the rooms here are content rooms right we've got this podcast studio here that everyone's listening to us now we've got the actual live room i call it which is where i sit and do the lives and open up people's letters and then we've got now says the gym which is now our interview room for the subplots of the youtube stories that we're doing right so three recording rooms here at entrepreneur house so anyway, I just see even people staying here, like you guys stayed here last night. You know, like I just see this place as not my home, but as a place for us to make this happen. But equally, it sounds a bit mad that my my home is this entrepreneur house in my head. But I, mean, I hate property anyway. I'm probably rambling a bit here, but I hate property. And to me, like having a home is just, it's not, I don't want to own a big house for the sake of owning a big house I'm happy to have a big house if it has a function it serves society and a function in other words the business otherwise I don't want a big house I don't care all of my six year old loves running around in the big garden it's not, I don't care about that sound weird I wonder if Shabazz ever going to call you back yeah what does it mean if he's going to call back I don't, it's the saying, never meet your heroes, is true. <laughs> Maybe, I think, is it? Let me try and ring him again. Yo, how are you? Hey, mate. Chilling yourselves. Good, good. I'm just hanging out with my colleague. Yeah, We're doing a podcast. Well, tell us your story and, and how we can help you. I always said to one. I'm, I've always know where to start. It's just, I've always had to be there for my family. That's the main thing, so... Me being a teenager, I've had to lose opportunities. I don't want to go into his long stories, such as university, working in certain jobs, uh, losing friendships, we've had to move locations. But it's always, because our father left that, you know, I wouldn't be rich. He got married again. My mom changed her religion. Her whole family hated her. So it's we've had no one, basically. And as the elders... It's been years, the father figure looking after my siblings. So I'm not really having no help at all. So I've, I've yeah, it honestly, it's, it's just been tough. So even at this, the way you call me like 10 minutes ago, sorry, I live in a tiny ass bedroom. I'm a 30 year old man. I don't have nothing. I just, it's buying these, you know, the small things, buying the small, and taking my mom out making sure my younger brother and my siblings, they have that father figure above them. And so he, he was getting to me that, obviously my friends, they, they're going somewhere. And I've tried the same things. I've tried trading. And recently I've tried forex trading. I've tried affiliate marketing. And at the same time where I have to pay bills, I've had the debts to pay, taking the whole family, the responsibilities on me. I've got nothing at the moment. I re- and because of the trading, I recently left my job as well. Made redundant. And it's just been difficult. So I have this business plan. And I think it's incredible. It's a brilliant opportunity because I've spoken about it. I've done my research. And you're the perfect person. And the, if I missed your call turning 13 in the next hour, it's a massive sign to me that I've wasted an opportunity. So I just think it. I think you're the same. You, it's either you, you're going to help me move forward, or I don't know how I'm going to do this. I, mean, it's, I don't know what to do. Sorry. I understand. Well, thank, thank you so much for sharing your personal story. And it, and it, it, it gets to me, to be honest. I, I, I get it. I, I, I appreciate, well, you, you, you know, the sacrifice you're making. 
um, and what what you have done. Um, and there's plenty of measures of success, but I would say if you've been there for your siblings, that's a big success. You know, like you you you've sacrificed there. But tell me what you need help with. What the what what do you need? What is it? What is what is what is missing for you to do what you're talking about? I don't know what to do regarding business because I've never had that. I've had to be the father figure to my younger siblings. I don't know when it comes to business. I don't know how when it comes to you know manufacturing, how to do websites. I don't know how to do any of this stuff. Um, I've looked at your health bank. I've looked at how to start that business. I've been because we moved to Manchester a few years ago. Um, as I paid into the messages as well. Recently, we were in hostels, and um, because of that hostel, they ruined everything. We were homeless. We had to get a house again. Hostels, depression. There was a suicide. All the fighting. It was, it was just a hard time. But I was a lot place now. But I built my credit back up. I'm slowly building my credit. All the debts are cleared, so starting back from fresh now. I just don't know how to get back out there and get that business up and running. And that, I just don't know how to do that. And I've been reset. As I mentioned, sorry, I've tried the training, I've tried other things. Unfortunately, it went wrong. So I don't know how to get this business up and running. Uh, yeah. I understand. I, I do. Um, maybe I'll just start off by saying... The best thing you could do for your step one, best thing you could do for yourself is stop saying you don't know how to do business. Just just stop saying that because that's that's telling your subconscious that you can't do it. If you say something out loud, your subconscious hears it. If you say it enough, it makes it true. So ju- just stop saying you're not good at business and start saying you're going to learn how to do it. Okay. It's It's not that hard. And certainly these days, things like, for example, building a website have become super easy. If you can copy and paste uh, anything on a photo in your photo uh, album, you can make a website. And so, you know, they have templates, for example, that literally like drop a picture in this graphic and will make you a website. And then you press publish on the website and it puts it up for you as a website. It is so, so easy these days. It's it's actually the easiest time ever in history to launch a business, start a business. It's so, so easy. It's been made simple by a lot of the companies that want you to buy their product, of course, but want it to be simple so that you start. So so I think, you know, for example, with a website, you know, just go on platforms like GoDaddy.com and you'll see they have templates and tutorials and it's all free, you know, and so... Honestly, I'm confident with it. I've got a friend who can help me with the website. Oh, he's older than myself, but he knows how to do the website. It's more the material side, because as I mentioned, in my, my religion, there's a lot of people that wear, you know, hijabs over their faces, and they don't really have the time to go take it off to eat in the public, to eat and drink in the public. So this just includes like a zipper, you know, belt pole where they can have something in public, etc. Oh, I got it, yeah. Right. So it's just, I don't know where to get, I can get the materials, I, I know to go get it tailored, but I don't know where to register a business, I don't know how to do that, and that's just where I need your help. I, I don't know how else to explain it, if that makes sense. Yeah, it, it, a little bit makes sense, if I fill the gap in on what you're saying, but again... Like, I want you to start realizing that you can do it. And so, for example, registering a company, you Google how to register a company. It's there. You know, you can go on helpbank.com and say, how do I register a company? And there'll be 100,000 people on there that can help you with that answer. You know, a lot a lot of it, you know, is probably partly excuses from you. You know, you've probably had a hard time. You've gone through a lot. Maybe you've lost your motivation. Yeah, yeah and, and and now you're and now you, if you've lost motivation, you're partly blaming you don't know, and you what you mean is you haven't looked. Yeah, no, sorry, I I know what it is as well, but it's also the situation I'm in. So as yeah, I mentioned because I'm not working because I'm looking after my family. Honestly, I don't have anything to my name. 
I just I don't want nothing off you, Sam, and I'm not trying to be rude. It is more the it is the guidance. I just need that direction. Six months, this is where I'm gonna to get to. I don't know where I'm going at the moment. Because without the funds, without the necessities, I don't drive as well. I don't know where to go get the material, but I don't know how I'm gonna get there, I don't know how I'm gonna afford it. I don't know if I get it wrong. I'm just messing my head up and I know you're right about that. Yeah, I think I think I think you've gone through a period of dedicating yourself to your family. And I totally get that and I respect it so much. I think, you know, at this point, you know, as a thirty year old man, you're healthy, right? Yeah, no, I feel fine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I think, you know, I'm 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 gonna give you some tough love and say, you know, you've got to get up, leave the cave and start hunting. You know, like you, you haven't gone out and gone out hunting for so long. You've been looking after your family in the cave that you, mm-hmm. you, you theorized what it's like out there in the real world. You, you know, what's it like to hunt? I don't think I can hunt. I'm not sure how to hunt. You know what you need to do? You need to just go out there and start doing it. Start hunting again, you know, and I'm using a metaphor here, of course, but you need to just start doing things and stop saying you don't know it. So I'm going to know you totally, I speak. I can speak to a lot of people. I've been in sales jobs. I've been in records. I do incredible in sales. I can speak to a lot of people. A lot of my friends also say to me, you need to go on holiday by yourself. Go experience the world. Once again, it's just the situation I'm in. I don't know how I can leave my family. I can't afford anything at the moment. What I saw, I saw an opportunity of yours where you're having that, you're bringing people to a house, you know, business people. For me, I thought that was the perfect thing. I need to be around people out like there. I need to get out of my house that you mentioned. I, I, I can't, I just don't know how to. Where are you based now? I'm in Manchester. Manchester. UK. Do you, do you go to London? Do you, do you, is it? Once again, never been. I've never really left. You've I'm never been to London? London. Do you my family when I was younger, but that was it. Okay. If I paid for you to get a train ticket from Manchester to London, would you go? I would honestly, if I had the opportunity to come see you, I would take it. Yeah, I would definitely. Okay. So let's arrange this. Let's arrange for you to come to London, and I'll pay, of course, for a return ticket, um, and uh, come and see me in London. And I want you to... I'm going to set you a homework task. All right? You, you, yeah, I mean, if you don't mind, I'm happy to pay for the ticket myself. And like I said, I'm not happy to take things up for people. No, I want to do it. I want I want to do it. You know, you've 101 days of DMing me. You you deserve a little bit of a um, a well done. So I'm, I'll pay for the ticket. I think, I think if you want to pay me back, then do this. Right? Do this thing. Do this thing. I want you to articulate your idea into a pitch a 60 second pitch i want you to pitch the idea and 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 basically i want you to do it in a way that if i put it up online and tell people about your idea they will listen understand it and want to support you so your your homework do you remember homework when you were at school oh i was brilliant there you go you're going to come up with a 60 second pitch and you're going to practice it over and over again because I tomorrow I'm actually going to Hong Kong so I won't be in in the UK for 6 weeks so okay, um, so basically you have 6 weeks to practice the perfect pitch and then I'm going to meet you in London and I'm going to help you pitch that dream of yours to the staircase and then we're going to and and then we're going to edit it and upload it and help you launch your idea. That's absolutely perfect. Thank you. All right. So, uh, and then, like you said, you can come back to Entrepreneur House and we'll sit down, talk it through and try to help you. But um, first step is, uh, I think you, you, you have to get your pitch ready. You up for the challenge? Oh, I'm definitely, oh, I'm definitely up for it. Okay. So, so my team after this will DM you with dates of when we'll be in London when I come back from my trip. And then we'll send you the money for the tickets so, there's, so you don't have to worry about that. 
and then we'll see you then and I'm excited to help you progress this um and again please every 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 day you have gone and dm'd me okay please change that now every day do an affirmation say I know business and what I don't know I can learn so say it now yeah no I I do I know business I think you'll percent out uh, everything I don't know, I can learn. Everything I don't know, I will learn. Exactly. So all of the things about, you know, how to raise money, how to find a supplier for your product, it's all sortable. It's not hard. But it's only hard if you tell yourself it's hard. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, it's not okay. hard. No, that's fine. And, 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 and we will help you, but it's up to you. We can't do it for you. You still have to help yourself, Okay. So start Googling these things. Start going on helpbank.com and asking questions. You know, by the time I see you in six weeks' time, I want you to tell me all the things you know. Tell me all the things you're struggling still with. But ultimately, I think you can get quite far in six weeks. And if it's if you've got quite far in six weeks, I think you can get everything you need when I meet up with you in six weeks' time. Yeah, I always start to say I've got a, bit, a small business plan together. I'm definitely going to get that perfect here down at Wolf and Dog with me. Perfect. I look forward to meeting you, and uh, thanks yeah. thanks for reaching out. Enjoy your holiday. Thank you again. Sorry for all the hundred messages. No, nope. don't be sorry. You were always polite. You were never rude. I'll never, I'll never mind that. Well, thank you for that. Enjoy your night. Thank you for your friends. Take Bye. Care. Bye. Yeah, that's Wow, so wholesome. Amazing story, isn't it? People's real life stories. There's nothing more interesting than real life. I know a lot of people do podcasts where it's like all these famous people, but I, d- I know all these famous people's stories. I'm not really interested. It's real life stories that I find fascinating. Like people, people that sacrifice like that he's making. What an incredible story. And I, and I think what I, what I take from it, it's it's weird because it's a really quite sad story. But weirdly, I feel uplifted by it because there's hope when people are asking for help. So he's trying to fight his way out of that situation. And for some reason, that gives me like an uplifted feeling. If he didn't reach out, he's not searching for the answer. He's just giving up, laying down and not doing anything about it. I'd, I'd, be, I'd be depressed about it. But the fact he's got a sad story, but he's fighting, gives me hope. Good way to round off the first episode. Yep. Be humanity. One small step at a time. <laughs> I was trying to do the Neil Armstrong quote but I couldn't remember it like one giant leap for man giant leap for mankind something profound like that but it's one step one. at a time oh yeah <laughs> one step at a time imagine if Neil Armstrong actually said that yeah one step at a time uh, I'm, off, I'm off now onto the moon <laughs> never be iconic would it it is it is crazy isn't it and I think we can help people even there one person The butterfly effect of helping just one person is quite big.